Good afternoon. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Say to your neighbor, peace to you. Peace to your house. Peace to all that you have. And peace to our beloved nation, Nigeria. In Jesus' mighty name. And the people said, Amen. Well, I bring you greetings from our president. I'm not making that up. If he didn't say greet the people for me, because I told him we're gathered, and I had to be taken away to see and meet with him, and he said, please greet them for me and tell them to keep on praying. So I bring you greetings from our president. I was with him yesterday in Kaduna, deliberating and strategizing about the future of Nigeria. That's my new specialty. I love the work. I love it. I love it. It's transition from pastoring the sheep to shepherding the nation. He said to David in Psalm 78, the last three verses, I took you from the sheep court, from attending to the little ewes, so that you can come and shepherd Israel. And we have the record. He shepherded Israel with integrity of his heart and the skillfulness of his hands. So integrity is not enough to run a nation. You must have the skill to govern. And may God endow our president in this last leg of his tenor. With all this in Jesus' name, please keep our president and his leadership team in your prayers that they will finish strong according to the plans and purposes of God for our nation, Nigeria, despite all the challenges we face as a nation and the odds against us as a people. If we are going to have peace, which is the first thing that we say is, is, is for cardinal program. Peace, progress, prosperity, and possibilities. It's the same thing as saying, and they that be of you shall build old waste places, number one, Number two, they shall raise the foundations of many generations. You are not laying, you are raising to find out things that were defective so that you can correct them. And then you shall repair the breach and restore the paths to dwell in. Four cardinal program, as simple as ABC. The river parted into four river heads. And the gospels are Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They are deliberate. Okay? Uh, if, you, if we begin to understand these things, the Bible says, pray for them that are in authority so that we may have peace. So if you hate a leader, if you can't stand him, and all you do is to curse him, you are creating different environment with the things you are saying. But if you begin to bless them that curse you, Then we have it on record that you'll be pouring coal fire, not to burn them, but to melt their hearts so that Nebuchadnezzar can fall flat before Daniel. We have to change our attitude towards those who are leadership because what you sow today, you reap tomorrow. And there's nothing you do that you can please mankind. There's no policy that is issued today that will favor everybody. Those who are blessed by it will continue to thank God. Those who find it that uh, it's like they are taking this away from us, they will cry and they will curse. May you remain among those who bless in the mighty name of Jesus. The theme of the 2022 Gain Reunion Conference is the signs of the times and the end of the age. Say that with me. The signs of the times and the end of the age. Of the age. Our central text is from Luke 21. On the opening night, I read the first 11 verses. I'm sure you remember them. And then verses 25 through 28. With your permission, I would like to read them again. But Pastor E.K., I need to become very disciplined because I heard that from Pastor Simeon yesterday that what will make the difference of turning one mina into ten mina is your consecration 
your discipline and everything. Thank you for bringing that word. Luke 21, 1 to 11, it reads, and I quote, And he looked up and saw the rich putting their gifts into the treasury. How many of you know you need plenty of money to do politics? You are going to find out that Joseph didn't pay a dime. Daniel didn't pay a dime. Esther didn't pay a dime. Nehemiah just appealed to the king to give him what he would need to do it. If you are really amassing wealth and doing things in order to prove a point, you have first cousins of Absalom. And with all his chariots, he still hung himself. You're going to see money fail in Nigeria politics in this season. Oh, don't we need money? We do. But we need God more. And he owns everything. And if you have God on your side, everything that he has on earth and heaven belongs to you. Okay. And he looked up and saw the rich putting their gifts into the treasury. And he saw also a certain poor widow. Is that person here today? Who wants to see Nigeria change? You want to see the church of God become dynamic? But has very little to contribute and would have despised that little. Say, okay, this is all my living, but I give it all the same. And you think God does not pay attention during offering. And he saw also a certain poor widow putting in two mites. So he said, truly I say to you, he must be watching, that this poor widow has put in more than all the rich. For all days out of the abundance of putting offerings for God. You don't get the difference, do you? I'm not sure you understand what he's saying. They have put in offerings for God. But she, out of her poverty, put on in all the livelihood that she had. So she gave herself first and gave all that she had. But they just gave out of what they had and, and gave God. And said, you can take that. Uh, how much do you say you need? You need 50 million? Okay, I'll give you 25 today. You can come back another time. Then it becomes a God in your life. Then as some spoke of the temple, how it was adorned with beautiful stones and donations. Can I remove this? Then as some spoke of the temple, how it was adorned with beautiful stones and donations. He said, these things which you see, the days will come in which not one stone shall be left upon another that shall not be thrown down. So they asked him saying, teacher, but when will these things be? Project 16. When will it be? You have been saying this for a long time now. We had you, but when is it going to be? You are in the season of manifestation and fulfillment. So they asked him, saying, Teacher, but when will these things be? And what sign will be when these things are about to take place? Wow. I had my daughter yesterday showing different uh, aspects of. of of deception and, and how you can become a victim of it, false prophets, this, that, blah, blah. I said, whoa. They finished all the signs. Pastor Shala, blah, blah, blah. I said, okay. So, my sons are answering for me at the gate. Because if your sons and daughters are no better than you, you have emasculated them. God is not the God of your father alone. He's the God of fathers. I am the God of your fathers Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. If Abraham, I mean, if Isaac and Jacob do not become fathers, Abraham had finished them. Must become fathers. You don't know how excited I am now, looking forward to carrying my first princess, my granddaughter. I'm looking forward to it seriously, to begin to dance for her. <laughs> I said, this is the sign. Take heed that you not be deceived. For many will come in my name. You see sign birds, international ministry, global ministry, local ministry, in Jesus' name, PLC. Because the reason they gather together is offering on Sunday, like two, three, four. Then there must be a midweek, that is a week service, where you gather more offering because you are paying bills. 
If you don't like me, you will like me one day. Doesn't matter. You know that as soon as the service is over, what interests you is how many people attend my conference and how much did we make. He left the whole of heaven, became poor for your sakes, and you are taking advantage of other people. Take heed that you do not be deceived, for many will come in my name saying, I am he. I'm not sure you got that, did you? He didn't say, I'm Jesus. They will say, Jesus is real. And they will mount Jesus that you think they are his. Nevertheless, the foundation of God stands sure. Haven't they sealed? The Lord knows them that are his. Let every man that names the name of the Lord Jesus Christ depart from iniquity. But in a great house, there are many verses, some unto honor and some unto dishonor. For many will come in my name saying, I am he. And the time has drawn near. Therefore, do not go after them. But when you hear of wars, it's giving you the signs, wars and commotions. Do not be terrified, for these things must come, must come to pass, but the end will not come immediately. I'm going to explain that by going to Matthew 24 to let you know there what is called the beginnings of sorrows. They are both pants, like a woman in labor. Something is about to give way. I saw the picture of that woman old and ragged, in ragged clothes in the course of our fasting and praying in December. She was so ragged, I stood like this, and I saw, I, I said, Lord, what is this picture? He said, that's the old Nigeria about to give birth to the new. How many of you were there when I gave, well, when I shared it? Thank you. Then he said to them, nation will rise against nation. Is that happening? And kingdom against kingdom, is that happening? See, in the olden days, in order for you to increase your wealth base, you have to go to war. That's why many of you don't know that business is warfare. Because the reason they were engaged in war is to extend their territories to increase what naturally you would say is theirs. They conquered territories so as to exploit them. The first world war recorded in the Bible is Genesis chapter 14. And that war was fought over resource control, asphalt. Today, the largest deposit of asphalt in the whole world is in Nigeria. Between Ondo State and Ogun State, that's the largest concentration of asphalt. It would tie the whole of Africa and we'll still be exporting. But we don't have the skills to begin to develop them. But a generation is coming. Amen. God preserve those things that will be bigger than oil for a time to come. Can I tell you something? When Moses left Egypt and they were going, God directed them to a desert where they will have to plant trees to grow. But the sons of Ishmael, whom he said he would bless, he directed them to oil well where there will be plenty of resources that you will look at Dubai and say, is this heaven on earth? But do you know the largest, the largest ever deposit of gas in that entire region now, it's found in Israel, and they've not started tapping at all. From their brain power, they're already controlling the world. Imagine when they begin to tap those things. They are not touching it for now. Tell your neighbor, don't die over oil well. Let's go on. Then he said to them, nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. And there will be great earthquakes in various places. Can't you please lift up your hand and thank God for Africa? We thank you, Lord. Waterfalls, rivers, oceans. Thank you. I had a conversation one time that the angels of God came to the earth and they were going to give God a report of what they found among nations. And they mentioned America, earthquakes, all kinds of tornadoes. And when it got to Africa, they said, it's so serene, vegetation, green. Rivers, waterfalls, and God, and God love. <laughs> Wait till you see their leaders. There are wars and earthquakes. That's why we need to change. You are hearing a message of change. 
you must make a difference by first becoming different. And there will be great earthquakes in various places and famines and pestilences. And there will be fearful signs and great signs from heaven. That's verse 11. Let me jump to verse Luke chapter 21, verse 25 to 28. And there will be signs where? I'm not sure you understand this. There will be signs in there. So the sun will become miracle and signs worker. No. There are nations whose symbol of worship is the sun. Look in the book of Ezekiel. They turned their back on God and they were worshiping the sun. There are nations like Japan. Sun is a symbol of their worship. And there will be signs in the moon. Half crescent of the moon belongs to Islam. He said, I'm going to shake every other God that did not create this heaven and the earth. In the stars, in the stars and on the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. Men's heart filling them from fear. Where is Professor Jagusha? Can't see him here. Is he here? Okay. Professor, please rise up, Professor Jagusha. Professor Jagusha suffered earthquakes, I think, twice, four times, and um, what's the other one called? Uh, stroke, twice. Why? For Nigeria! It was part of our com manifesto committee, and yourself, and Nasir Rufai, Professor Okunu, we sat there crafting the future of Nigeria in what we call a manifesto. For night. And there will be Nikon Poos that will tell you you don't have an experience. But you just ignore them and keep on doing what you're doing. And he, bam, 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 four times heart attack. By the grace of God, we were able to get him out of here. While he was lying in the hospital critically ill, I put a phone call. I said, Nigeria will live and you will die. You don't die for your nation, you live for it. A great general does not die for his country. He makes others to die for it. Stop saying, I'm ready to pay the pen. No, the, what? The ultimate price. Jesus already paid that. You will not die. You will live. You will declare the works of God. But who has given him national award? Who recognizes his contribution? But you know what? The day of the reward is around the corner. Amen. You will not labor in vain or bring forth for trouble. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Men's hearts filling them from fear. And the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth. If you don't expect it, it will not happen to you. Expectancy is a breeding ground for the miraculous. What you expect to get. I expect that Nigeria will flourish again. I expect Nigeria will walk in my lifetime. The name of Jesus Christ. Sir Andrew was former British High Commissioner was here. When he saw me running up and down, in one day, you were there. Three times I was with the president, current president. Three times I was with Jonathan. Three times in one day I was with British High Commissioner. Then he said, I want to ask you a question, Dr. Bakary. What do you want out of this? I said, only one thing, a nation that walks. He said, define it for me. I said, I was in the UK between 1994 and 1996. And in 1994, I decided to apply for British passports for my wife and children, for she was born in England. And I went to the British post office across our neighborhood, took the British passport forms, bought postal order, and took an envelope, addressed it to British passport office, the British passport, the postal order, and then put Nigerian passports of everyone, my five children and my wife, our wedding certificate, and the birth certificates of the children. When we had finished it, the only person who said, I know these people, they are real, was Pastor Nims, because he was regarded as a clergyman. He signed it. That was all. We went to the post office. We posted the document to British Passport Office. By Friday, all the supporting documents were returned. 
by the following Tuesday or Wednesday, all the British passports came. I did not pick a phone call. I did not call anybody. Nobody went anywhere on my behalf. And yet they came. I said, that's a nation that works. And he looked at me. I wish we can get four of you. Um, said to me, Pastor, write a letter to any ministry in Nigeria and wait for reply. If it comes to you without you showing up, then it's working. Yeah. You were there when I was to renew my Nigerian passport. You were there. The man who was helping us said, sir, a big man like you cannot come here without meeting the boss. They put me in this room. They took us from that room. They put us in another place. Then we were waiting as VIP to see the controller general of immigration. I acted like I never met the man. I just held my peace. So when they eventually brought me to his office, he jumped on and said, Baba, what are you doing here, sir? I said, he dragged me here. I came here to renew passport, not to see you. He said, go back, sir. They will bring your passport to your hotel. I was staying at Transcom. They will bring your passport to your hotel. And I shook my head. Do you do that for every Nigerian? It's not a nation that works. When you have to do long legs, but thank God, God is not interested in the legs of a man, the Bible says. Because his legs are too long. You can't sing that song except when you are born, they call you Babagba. That was the name they called me. It's my Olorun. It's not your Olorun. Olorun Totobio. Olorun Ba. Ababa. Aye Oba. Ofarun Shebu. Isn't it amazing that those who have been in church all their lives still think that God lives in heaven? If he does, where was he living before he created the heavens? <laughs> Just a question. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Read it in Hebrew. Even before the beginning. In the eternal past. He looked at you. Ephesians chapter 2. And he adapted you as sons and daughters before the foundation of the world. That's the God you want to figure out with your little brain. God does not live in heaven. His throne is there. Heaven lives in God because he created it. I know you are working so hard to get to heaven. I wish you well. Have safe trip. Go now. Okay, you are getting confused. You are looking at me. Are we not going to heaven? Well, no, he has given the earth to the sons of men. I can tell you where we will be. <laughs> you want me to tell you? We'll be cut off. That's all. We'll be cut off. How are you going to be cut off? The same way Noah was cut off. He created an ark. The flood came to destroy others. It was floating in trouble. See, we are entering a season where you will know who you are. I don't care if heaven is full of gold that you walk upon. Solomon's temple was gold-plated. Complete gold was on the floor to let you see thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I don't care if it's a house of mud. As long as Jesus is there, that's heaven for me. Heaven is living in my heart because Jesus lives there. He's not looking for the earth to live in. He's not looking for heaven to look in. He said, can you open the door? I want to come in and live inside of you. If any man obey my word, I and my father will come and will make our abode in him. Are there rooms for God in this place this afternoon? I'm still reading the Bible. Have I finished? 
Okay, so I've not even started preaching. Men's hearts fell in them from fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Ah, now. Somebody say now. Now, when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads because your redemption draws near. Okay, let's read Matthew 24. I'll read verse 1 to 8. Just to corroborate this. Then Jesus went out and departed from the temple and his disciples came up to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said to them, Do you not see all these things? As surely I say to you, not one stone shall be left here upon another that shall not be thrown down. So when, when you are attracted to physical building and you don't have people built inside of it, you are attracted to a disaster. Because everything, no matter how beautiful, will be renovated with fire. It's just a place to protect us from the wind, from the elements, from storm, from rain, from every other thing so that people can be well built and then be released into the world. Do you understand me? To bring change. That's why emphasis at the citadel is on the building. It's the capacity to see the invisible, to hear the inaudible and to touch the intangible. For Elijah, was it Elijah or Elijah? Elisha, he was in the citadel and he saw what was happening in the bedroom of the king of Syria. He was in the citadel, read your Bible. When Gehazi ran after that Captain Naaman, and collected money from him and returned and sat like, he said, did not my eyes go with you when you turned the corner? If your eyes are not seeing, your ears are not hearing, and you're not touching the intangible, then you better begin to think that you're not part of him. Because if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, it's none of his. Now as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, how did they come to him? I'm going to show you one or two more verses of the Bible to let you see that when I unveiled Project 16, many people went home confused. And there are people who are making eternal phone calls. Now say, Kilo Kilo You won't catch me at my word. So unveiling part one took place on Wednesday. Unveiling part two will take place here today. And unveiling part three tomorrow when nobody's invited. Except a few. It's called an outer court. Holy place. Holy of holies. Uh, now as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us, when will these things be? And in what will be the sign? The sign of your coming and of the end of the age. One major sign. And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ. They are not going to say they are the Christ. They know the Christ. They will be pointing, He is the Christ. He is Lord. But they are doing things that are contrary to Christ. Ever learning, never able to come to the knowledge of truth. From such turn away. For many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ and will deceive many. And you will hear words and rumors of words. See that you are not troubled for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. So what will those things be? For nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines, pestilences and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. It's like a woman saying, ah. Uh, uh, if you have been in the labor room with a woman, the doctor the, or the midwife will be saying, one finger, two fingers, three fingers, four fingers. Is that not so? Five fingers. Push! Push! I was there five times. I took delivery of one of the children, so I know how bad pants is like. I've not had one. I'm related to one who had it five times. Put, put your hands together for Mrs. B. Mm -hmm. All the years she was in the labor room, she never cried one time. I said, Mrs. B, it's only the baby's voice we hear. We don't hear yours. She said, you want me to add pain to pain? Would the cry stop the pain? So she just push. When it got to the fifth number, I said, Mrs. B, you're too good. 
Uh-huh. I'm not Jacob. <laughs> I don't have four wives. So, uh-huh. If you want 12 sons, <laughs> try four wives. <laughs> Let's read. All these are the beginning of sorrows. With what? Pastor Shola Desoye taught yesterday. And how my daughter took it like a button passed to her. And then pass it on to Pastor Simeon Agbaoje. <laughs> and he laughed. 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 You see, in a relay race, you don't run with your own button. It's passed on to you. One generation will praise his work to another generation and declare his mighty work. So you saw Pastor Shalom, the football pit, playing so hard. And he said, I can't score this goal. Pass it to Esther. Esther took it. It did like this. It did like this. And everybody was clapping. He said, ah, we are not there yet. Pass to Pastor Simeon. Pastor Simeon said, bam, bam. He bounced on it. He said, he came over to you. <laughs> and he said, hey, bam, you. <laughs> Any ring go here to fair cook well, or when he told his son, Unca, but a la runica de Shumpa, Elerunco. You know, it was a wonderful game, and they pass it, pass it, pass it. Yesterday went, and then Pastor Sam, I'm going to concentrate on Isaiah 49 for a moment. And, 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 and ask questions that will probe you and probe me. But I want you to see four major things that I want you to focus on in this day and age when nations are rising against nations, when people are doing exploits greater than yours. Sha. I stood in one place for 30 years. We are patching the wall. Patching the wall for 30 years in the same spot. And then after the 30th anniversary, we enter into Jordan. And heavens open, behold the citadel. Unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. Between the child and the son, 30 solid years of preparation. And when he has done nothing, heavens open and said, This is my beloved son in whom I well pleased. What did he do? He waited. We are a mission in a hurry, thinking that a missionary is a, is a mission in a hurry. We want to get everything done because we are in competitive. We are victims of competitive jealousy. My church is bigger than yours. Yours is better than mine. Uh, uh, you are only riding a car, riding jets. Idiots, you are going to leave everything behind here. Why spend your life acquiring the things that you can't take out of here? Now, when people hear this, oh, they say he's talking about those who... Who, who pastors who have just I had jet before any of them. I use it for business. You may not believe it. As you heard, I'm not abusing anybody. Shine your eyes. Four things I want you to see from everything that is written in both Luke and Matthew that we just read. Number one. When these things begin to happen, what must you focus on? In Luke 21 verse 8, he's saying, take heed. It's a personal responsibility. Take heed, let no man deceive you, because there will be false prophets who will deceive many. What's the difference between a false prophet and a prophet? You think the false prophet talks falsely? No. He was once a true prophet. Now he is perverted, is gifty, and is focused on making as much money as possible and begin to tell things that God is not saying. You cannot find a counterfeit 10,000 naira in Nigeria because there's no 10,000 currency. So when you see a false prophet, he's, been, he's not being false before he was true. But now he's using kone kone, wayo wayo, to give people prophecies. I was in Ghana, uh, Kumasi, preaching for, I've forgotten the name of the pastor there now, to escape my mind. And, and as soon as I, as I finished, they came with cassette tape, uh, cut me a prophecy, cut me a prophecy. I said, I'm not a tailor, I don't cut anything. <laughs> cut me a prophecy. The 
Deception primarily is by false prophets. Because you have believed them to be genuine prophets and when they are derailed, they begin to derail the others. Let me ask you a question. Between Jonah and Balaam, who was a true prophet, who was a false prophet? Okay, be thinking about it. I will not give you an answer. I just want you to tell me. Here comes Jonah, vomited by the whale or by the big fish. In 40 days, Nineveh shall be overthrown. Did he come to pass? Huh? So is he a false prophet? Is he a true prophet? Was he not angry with God? He was so angry. Read chapter two, chapter four. It, give me, give me, give me Jonah chapter four. I do not want to come here. I told you so. I know you are sympathetic. I know you are full of mercy. I know you can change your mind. This is why I fled. Now you brought me here. Everybody now will call me a liar. Do you have Jonah chapter 4? Let's read it quickly. Oh Lord, it's not in your note. Don't always act on my note. It can come from my spirit. Thank you. But it displeased Jonah exceedingly. And it became angry. Give me chapter 2. No, not chapter 2. Chapter 3. In chapter 2, the, 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 the big fish vomited him. And now in chapter 3, listen to this. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah. How? The second time. The way he did with Abraham. And the Lord had said to Abraham. He said it to him. His father hijacked the vision. Until his father died. You don't have to struggle with anyone. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time saying. Arise go to Nineveh. That great city. And preach to it the message that I tell you. Who told him? So Jonah arose and went to Nineveh. According to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly great city. A three day journey in extent. He covered it in one day. And Jonah began to enter the city on the first day's walk. It's a three-day journey. It was propelled by the word of God. He began to jump and sprint and began to declare. Then he cried out and said, Yet forty days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. So the people of Nineveh believed God. Proclaim a fast. Put on sackcloth. From the greatest to the least of them. Then word came to the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne, laid aside his robe, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat in ashes. And he caused it to be proclaimed and published throughout Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles, saying, Let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything, do not let them eat or drink water. But let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily to God. Yes, let everyone turn from his evil way and from the violence that is in his hands. Who can tell? If God will turn and relent and turn away from his fierce anger so that we may not. The people repented and God relented. And the prophet was angry. Chapter 4. Then, no, give me that verse. Let me see. Then God saw their works that they turned from their evil way and God relented from the disaster that he had said he would bring upon them and he did not do it. Now, if God asks you to declare a word and you declare it and it does not happen because people repented, they will say you are a false prophet. Uh, he said, nah, 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 nah. You know, in, in what year was that? 1999. Your father, OBJ. You can, you can hide. But, but you said the, the axe is going to fall upon his head. But he didn't die. You lied. No. A thousand pastors gathered. And began to repent at altar. He was covered by AIT. Crying unto God. Why did you cry? Untrained. People. Was a, the man said it. I'm not trying to, to polish anything. Who cares? Who is trying to impress you? But it displeased, it displeased Jonah exceedingly. And he became angry. See this. 
So he prayed to the Lord and said, Ah, Lord, was not this what I said when I was still in my country? Therefore, I fled previously to Tashish, for I know that you are gracious and merciful God, slow to anger and abundant in loving kindness, one who relents from doing harm. Therefore, now, O oh Lord, please take my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. But the word of the Lord come to pass, going to the book of Nahum, the people went back into their idolatry and the whole of Nineveh was wiped out. And you look at it in the book of Kings, it said, according to the word of Jonah, the son of Amittai. Because his word will not relent to return to him void. When you repent, he relents. When you go back, he hits you hard. Are you still with me? Many, many, many people will be deceived because of false prophets. And false prophets are not in celestial church. Hello. Many of them are in charismatic Pentecostals. Oh, sorry, I beg your pardon, Pentecostal. Let me say it properly. <laughs> God! This is a prophecy. God is going to give you treasure with pleasure without measure. Somebody say amen. Now, the man had done nursery rhyme. You know, treasure. You know, pleasure. You know, measure. He said, it rhymes well. God is going to give you treasure with pleasure without measure. Everybody say, treasure with pleasure without measure. Treasure with pleasure. They will go home and nothing happens. One man was trying to, to say what he didn't understand and doesn't understand. Acts like a Nikon poop. But we forgive him. He said, there was a man of God who taught the prosperity book. A pastor at the boy, I'm sorry. He tied his book, his prosperity book. Now he's rolling in billions of debt. He said, I'm not despairing, I'm just telling you. You have the stamina to even borrow. You don't have the standing to go to a bank, they know who you are. And I never taught any book called Prosperity. I taught a lie. When, you wrote, when it's written the book, that the anointing oil is not a symbol of the Holy Spirit. It is the life of God in a bottle. That was what I taught. And it was turned from the minds of people. And you are talking about me, but we reconcile since. You were there that day. When Oyedepo and I sat in the same first class and were eating, you came in, you saw me, you fixed. Are they talking? He who does not know his brother will die soon. For this reason, many of you are weak, many of you are sick, and many of you are asleep because you do not discern the body of the Lord. You can rise in the defense of the gospel, but don't touch the person. A servant will rise or fall to his master. What is this thing that you must be mindful of? Deception is personal responsibility. Take it, let no man deceive you. And there's so many of them in the church today across the planet. Matthew 24, 3 to 4. We need to understand this. Matthew 24, 3 to 4. Go ahead, give me that. He sat on the Mount of Olives. The disciples came to him privately saying, tell us when will these things be? And what will be what? The sign of your coming and of the end of the age. And Jesus answered and said to them, what is the sign? Take heed that no one Deceives it. It's personal responsibility. Take heed that no one deceives you. Give me verse 11 of Matthew 24. The many false prophets will rise up and deceive men. That deception is in the hearts and minds of false prophets. Who say things that are not true of God. It's called presumptuous sin to, to begin to declare things that are not true of God. He says, save me from the great sin. Save me from presumption that I will not presume what is not true of my God. That's what false prophets do. Number two. From the old thing that we have read and that they've, they, they, they've tremendously preached on yesterday and today. It is easier to be deceived and double into the occult when lawlessness abounds 
which is the exact opposite of righteousness. Why do pastors and prophets double into the occult? Because there's lawlessness everywhere. Truth has fallen on the street. Equity does not enter. I can stand before the whole world and say exact truth about what came into my hand. And you not see any game being played by anyone. I live my life in the open. That's the truth. Ever before anyone wrote anything, I said, well, how did you finance? They asked me. It was a public lecture. I said, I took loan from five banks. I could tax you to go sell your land. I could tax you not to, to I said, I'm living a sacrificial life. And you must, you must bring even your children's school fees. And you can go to Sheraton and steal and bring money for us to steal by generator in the, in, in the church. And say, we didn't ask you to steal, you just told. And then we build an empty house where there's no God. I took the loan and I'm paying. We pay two banks off. The third one is going off in four months. The rest have been struck. The fourth one we have started paying from this month. Do you understand? We will pay all without fail. And then collectively we dedicate it unto God. And then when are you going to do dedication? The first day I preach, I pray. Solomon prayed, he was dedicated. Moses prayed, he was dedicated. Do I need to bring superstars to dedicate? Put on your thinking cap. It's not wrong to call the fathers to bless your work. But I'm doing a blessed work. The smell of my father, of my son's garment is like the feel that the Lord has blessed. But Esau did not know. So he began to struggle for everything. It's like the smell of a field which God has blessed. Why don't you do what God has blessed instead of you asking him to bless what you are doing? Okay. This is how I lose friends. <laughs> a man I love very dearly, Pastor Michael Konko, one of the reasons I love him is because of his wife. And I told him in public, I said, you married this woman quickly. Uh, if I was in the competition, it was the type of woman I would like to be called my wife. But I'm not chasing her in my heart, and God knows. Mr. Okonko, you are the only reason why I've come, not because of Bishop. It was at that conference that I said, this is Baba, the one of first square before. He's retired now. Farumbi. I said, this is Baba Farumbi, this is a, a, a bishop, and this one and bishop, that one. Lock all of us in prison so that Nigeria can move forward. And they said, why? It's when the, the, the king threatened Elijah. He said, the God do my soul to me if the head of Elijah is on his neck today. And said, hold the door, this son of a murderer is coming. Immediately he prophesied, a bag of this will cause this, a bag of that. When you're under pressure, God will show up. But these men are not under pressure, they're under pleasure. That's why I said, lock us up. If you want Nigeria to make progress. And somebody said, he said, he's going to lock all of you. If you vote him, he's going But I said, lock me up too. <laughs> Do you have your brain under your, the soles of your feet? Tell your neighbor, think straight. Think straight. Look, this is a serious matter. You dabble into the occult. The moment you see lawlessness growing, and they tell you how they made it. If I open my mouth, you will see those who call men of God and you pick race. Not that we don't know about their secrets, but we keep quiet because God is a revealer of secrets. It's a revealer of secrets. You dabble into the occult. You begin to do all kinds of necromancy because lawlessness happens. I want you to take time, Pastor Simeon, to study the mystery of godliness and the opposing mystery of iniquity. The mystery of godliness produced Christ. The mystery of iniquity will produce the Antichrist. They didn't say anti to mean opposing Christ. No. It would look exactly like him. 
but does not carry his traits or his character. If you think you have power, I want you to know that the devil has power also. That's why we are given power over his power. Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy and nothing shall by enemies hurt you. If I see uh, uh, Apostle Comfort tomorrow and say, yeah, uh, you are in the UK about three weeks ago and you were going to a place and you saw a dress that was brown and you wanted to buy the brown. Then you saw a beautiful one that was much more, that was better than that and it was even cheaper but more glorious and you bought it. You say, yeah, egg by me. That's divination. It's a thin line from revelation. Magic and miracle are separated by line. And if you're not discerning, false prophets will derail you. Instead of bathing Christ in you, they'll become larger than life. You say, nobody can do what they are doing. Idiot. My righteousness is not better than yours. Your righteousness is not better than mine. He's only putting my righteousness into use. That increases the fruit of my righteousness. You wouldn't even know sin became sin for us. That we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Same righteousness. Of a man who got born again two hours ago. And of a bishop Abodere. Sorry, you're not bishop. You're a reverend doctor. Well, is that all? Abodere. Who has been born again before my mother conceived me. It's the same righteousness. But when you begin to apply righteous principles. The fruit of your righteousness increases. That's the difference. Teach them to turn their back from lawlessness and put their hearts into righteousness. You will see that righteousness exhausts a nation. Sin is a reproach unto a people. Please do not dabble into your cult. You are going to hear more about that later today. Mm. Number three. It is so easy to depart from righteousness and plug yourself into lawlessness when you see all around you people making it big time and you are slow, things are not working. And what's going to happen? Can I tell you momentarily? Your love will wax cold. That's all. If you see a man who is beginning to elevate gold more than God, his love is gone. That's how iniquity and lawlessness enter. Uh, heaven helps those who help themselves. Uh, but boy, uh, we no longer pray, we command. Who are you commanding? Your second cousin? Doubling to your cold. We easily happen to those who allow their love for God to grow cold. Matthew 24, 12 to 13. Matthew 24, 12 to 13. And because lawlessness is called iniquity, because lawlessness will abound, the love of many we grow cold. Who are the many? Believers. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one God, and thou shalt love the Lord your God. How? With all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your might. When your love begins to grow cold, you're looking for self-help mechanism. Kill Atule Shetuma attract a crowd. No, he's not building the crowd, he's building his church. May I give you some statistics? Can I ask you, how many people were in the world when Noah created his ark? God gave him the specification, he began to build. Do you want to know? Go and Google and find out how many people were in the earth. I won't tell you, I want you to give you the homework. Noah's ark, how many people on the earth? Go to Google, it will tell you the, almost the same, I mean the population of the earth. But only eight people were saved. How many people left Egypt for the promised land? If you don't know, if you have record, no record of Noah. 600,000 able-bodied men, minus women and children, left Egypt for the promised land. How many of that able-bodied men made it to the promised land? Two, Caleb and Joshua. How many people did he feel? 5,000 at a time, 4,000 another time. Before he left, how many people were there? 500. How many were in the upper room? 120. He's not looking for crowd. If he wants crowd to do this job, he will appoint footballers. They will fill stadia all over the world. He's looking for the remnant, the strong, the discerning, 
Do you understand me? When iniquity increases, the love of many will wash go. At here, quick, quick, quick. Uh, fast, uh, fast, uh, fast, uh, fast, uh, fast, cool. We have done everything we know how to do. Nothing seems to be working. Look at the other brother. Uh, this church is just growing. No. The tree that grows one night in the book of Jonah dies one night. I'm not going to be part of a small thing that starts in a big way. I want to be part of a big thing that starts in a small way. For behold, I lay in Zion a stone for a foundation, a tried stone, a precious corner stone, a sure foundation. He that believes shall not make haste. Why are you in a hurry? If God has given you 120 years to live for or 80 years to live for and you want everything right now when you are 30, what's going to happen the remaining 50 years? You'll be so frustrated that you may commit suicide because you have gotten it all. Revelation chapter 2, verse 1 to 7. If you want to know more about this, please make sure you corner uh, Pastor Simeon Afolabi to tell you why he changes the name of his church to First Love. This is where it is. What was it called before? Revival? Revival People's Church. When he revived and revived and revived and the people, he said, hey, well, we are losing our first love. This is where I got it from. To the angel of the church of Ephesus write, this thing say, he who holds the seven stars in his right hand. Who are the seven stars? The leaders of the church, the pastors of the church. You are in his palm. Don't let him crush you. Who walks in the midst of the seven golden lampstands. Many of the churches are golden lampstands without lamp. So flies play on cold stove. I know your works, your labor, your patience, that you cannot bear those who are evil. There are those who you don't mind who you relate with. I could not remember that in your job. You lie down with dogs, you get up with fleas. A wise man, a righteous man must choose his friends wisely. The companion of fools destroy them. Show me your friend and I tell you who you are. I know your works, your labor, your patience, and that you cannot bear those who are evil. And you have tested those who say they are apostles and are not. Hello. False apostles too. And I have found them liars. And you have preserved, persevered, and have patience. And I have labored for my name's sake and I have not become weary. Nevertheless, I have this against you that you have left your first love. Look at all the labor. So I can't see love here. It's growing cold. You are about to dabble into the occult, into lawlessness. Therefore, remember, therefore, from where you are falling, repent and do the first works, or else, I'll, what is the first work? Love the Lord God with all of your heart, with all of your soul. Madam, you love your husband? So if I come to you and say, I really like you, I don't think, where is the husband? Has he gone? She has gone. He has gone. Okay. I really like you. I don't think he cares about you. You know, uh, I'm the pastor of this building. You know, uh, uh, you see, he's not pastor of people anymore. He's pastor of this building. And I, and I, and I really like you. I like the way you sing. And uh, I just want us to have a date uh, outside of town. And we go somewhere. Nobody will know. Only. Only. Nobody will know. You will not know too. Remember where you have fallen. Repent and do the first works, or unless I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. So you have crowd, you don't have Christ. But this you have that you hate the deeds of the Nicolai times, which I also hate. He who has on here, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. And what is that? It means you will die? No. No. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life. Wisdom is a tree of life. Can I continue to tell you? It will give you all the, fun, for, for, all the four dimensions of the tree of life and you become a tree of life to your people. Even the leaves of that tree will become healing for the nations. You think it's when we die that we're going to eat the tree of life? You better go Go search your Bible well. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life. Wisdom is a tree of life. What's the fourth one? 
I can't hear you. Can someone speak? So you know. You know it? Uh -huh. Hope deferred makes your heart sick. But desire when it comes, when you're not the one generating your desire, when God is generating his desire and he putting it in your heart to begin to conceive it and to birth it, when the desire comes, it's a tree of life. I have no time to read Revelation chapter 3 because time is going so quickly and I've not even introduced the subject for today. Shall I read it? I will. This is how your love grows cold. Revelation 3, 14 to 22. If I don't cover anything, come and see me privately in public. <laughs> then she fly to where I'm going. I'll cast you out. The devil! And to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, this thing says, the amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know your works as you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hurt. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. What does this mean? Does it mean he swallows up? No. He's saying, you make me sick. I feel like throwing up each time I see you because you are neither cold nor hot. You make me feel sick. I'm God. I'm the healer. But each time I look at you, I feel like throwing up. Because you say I'm rich. I become wealthy and I need of nothing. And do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire. That you may be rich and white garments. That you may be clothed. That the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed. And anoint your eyes with eyes soft that you may see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore, be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the... Oh, you don't know this. Behold, I stand at the... Didn't he say to you, knock, it shall be opened unto you. Now he's saying, I stand at the door. Are you the door? The owner of the church was in the center of the seven golden lampstands. Not so. In Revelation, it was in the center. But we kicked him out and put AC in all the building. Nobody can hear anything. He's knocking. He's, no he's addressed to pastors, not congregation. So the angel of the church... I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and dine with him and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. The moment your love is growing cold, you are in trouble. You will complain more. You begin to complain. Everything around you will irritate you. But dead men don't complain. I die daily. If I'm going to respond to everyone that attacks me for every strife of tongues, I will not focus on what I'm sent to do. Just die to it. Oh, let me give you the fourth one. When we see all these things begin to happen, number four, the call, the faithful, and the choosing must have a singular disposition and must have a, a major devotion. When you see war upon wars, earthquake upon earthquakes, disaster upon disaster, men's heart failing them, that's the time you lift up your eyes and become cheerful because your redemption draws near. Redemption passed, Abraham was redeemed. Huh? Was he not redeemed? Read your Bible. I'll, I'll deal with that on Sunday. Redemption past, redemption present, redemption future. We do not think that all saints are redeemed. We think we are the redeemed Christian church of God of Citadel. Redeemed Christian church of God of uh, Lighthouse. We are the redeemed. Lord, the redeemed of the Lord. Is that New Testament or Old Testament? I know my redeemer live Is that Old Testament or Job? Or is that Job or New Testament? Redemption past, redemption present, Ephesians chapter 2, by his blood, redemption future. When you have gone through all this and you see these things happening, lift up your heads and begin to rejoice because your redemption. If you 
Focus attention on deception. Focus attention on those whose hearts are failing them. Focus attention on the things happening in the sky. You will not lift up and be cheerful. When you see terrorists breaking forth everywhere, when you see bandits breaking forth everywhere, when you see lawlessness everywhere, oh yes, Lord, he's coming near. The Lord is coming. Come, Lord Jesus, because your redemption draws near. Don't focus on wrong things. Focus on the truth that your redemption draws near. That God is allowing those things to happen to prove that he called you. That you are a solution provider. You may not be on television, you may not be on radio, but you are touching the heartbeat of God and the day of your manifestation is around the corner. He kept. John, in the wilderness, until the day of his manifestation. He didn't print posters. He did not hang any billboards. He was not on television and radio. When he hid the city, the word of the Lord passed by this and passed by that and came to Job, to John, the son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. When he carried that word, multitudes gathered unto him. And his first message is titled, You Brood of Vipers. Will you preach that on the first day that you gather people? You want to talk nicely to me? I'm so glad that you could come today. How wonderful. God bless you. Ah, and it's your last song. Your labor will not be in vain. Bless you. Why not? Let my mother. Oh, yeah. A big bow. A bammy big bow. Oh, yeah. 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 I'm only. Sorry. Sorry. I withdraw that statement. I meant every word. I've covered all that my wonderful sons and daughters did. Yesterday, pointing to what you should focus on. Letting people know that when your love begins to was cold, when, when you wake up in the morning, the first thing you take is your WhatsApp. When you're no longer on talking time with God, and, and all you do is uh, before you go to bed is the last thing you watch, and you put it by your side. When you wake up, you pick it again. That you're already addicted to social media. That your love is waxing cold. 20 years ago, there was no social media. Now it has enslaved the whole world. And you are boom, trapped in. And you don't know. It's, a, it's also a tool that we can use. Uh, if it starts being a tool, you become a fool. And then, Pastor Sam Otenike came today. And open the new feast for all of us in Isaiah 49, beginning from verse 1 to 13. I just want to ask a question. It's already a few minutes to two, and I want to open the second part <laughs> of unveiling Project 16. All I'm doing now is introduction. Did he chase you before you said yes? He did. For how long? For one day. For two months, what you have gone? Oh, my God. I'll try. So, you are going about and looking for her, and yes? So, huh? It wasn't that long. How do you know? She said so because you are the one chasing. You are not looking at time. Time was flying, but you are the pilot. You are the pilot. <laughs> the bad news is time is flying. The good news is you are the pilot. Fly it. <laughs> Okay, in Isaiah 49 that he read so powerfully and, and really taught on, I want to bring something out to let you know that what you do can affect your entire congregation. That when you begin to dabble into error, you raise erroneous people. I want you to ask to answer this question. Listen, O coastlands, to me and take it, you peoples from afar. The Lord has called me from where? Me. I can hear you. Me. From the matrix of my mother, he has made mention of my name. And he has made my mouth like a sharp sword in the shadow of his hand. He has hidden me and made me a polished shaft in his quiver. He has hidden me. And he said to me, you are my oh." In whom I will be, excuse me, who did God call from his mother's womb? 
who was hidden in the matrix of his mother, Isaiah or Israel. You are now talking to me. As you were speaking, heaven was downloading something inside of me where I sat. I took my iPad immediately and I said, okay, this is wonderful. Who was gone from his mother's womb? Who did God hide in the matrix of his mother? Isaiah the prophet or Israel or Zion? Can somebody talk to me? It's Israel. So Isaiah was lying. Let's read it again. Verse 1. Listen to Coastlands to who? Capital M. And take it, you peoples from afar. The Lord has called me, capital M, from the womb. From the matrix of my, capital M, mother. He has made mention of my, capital M, name. And he has made my, capital M, mouth. Like a sharp sword in the shadow of his hand, he has hidden me, capital M, and made me, capital M, a polished shaft in his quiver. He has hidden me. Who is me? I can't hear you. I pray the Father in the name of Jesus that the Bible will begin to read you. I've not just been reading the Bible, will begin to read you so that you, when you stand before him, you are before the, 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 what the Bible calls the, the, what, what is the liberty, uh, uh, what was the word used? Uh, uh, the mirror. You, you are face to face with the mirror of the world and then it's extraying the things inside of you so that you know. Okay, for you to understand this, let me take you to Acts chapter 8. You don't have to, you know the place. The deacon became an evangelist. The angel of the Lord spoke to him and said, go and join yourself to this chariot. What was the Ethiopian eunuch reading? The prophecy of Isaiah. And what intelligent question did he ask? Is the prophet speaking about himself or someone else? And he expounded Jesus Christ to him. Are you here? He expounded. You can't live the Christian life outside, outside of Christ. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live yet not I. It is Christ who lives in me. The life I now live in the flesh. I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. But I disagree with your answer. That is talking about Christ and is talking about Israel or Zion. My answer is the eye in the horse and the horse in the eye. Okay, I've lost you. Give me Isaiah chapter 6, verse number 8. It began with God. It's going to happen to you and the congregation you pastor and the city assigned to you. I left you at Crete, Titus, that you may set in order the things that are lacking and raise elders over the city, not just over the church. Also, I heard the voice of the Lord. Whose voice? The Lord. Saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then I said, here am I, send me. Who spoke here? I can hear you. Okay, let's read it. I also, also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send the eye? And who will go for us? Is the eye in the us? And is the us in the eye? One for all, one for one. So when Isaiah was prophesying chapter 49, he was involved. God was involved, Zion was involved, Israel was involved because you cannot be part of a whole except you are a unit of that whole. Are there football enthusiasts here? Enthusiasts here? Football fanatics, as you say. Ah, you say Chelsea. But where is more Chelsea? Oh, plenty. I saw you said Chelsea. The day, the day, what's the name? Hey, I can't, I can't. 
The day Lester won the cup. Uh, I was only wow. Because my wife was born in Leicester. We won! We won! I said, who are the we? Who are the we? If Nigeria participates in a world competition like World Cup Series, and the Nigerian team wins. Who wins? I can't hear you. Did you play? <laughs> Did you play? Uh, I know you almost died while you were watching. Hey, 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 ah! Do you want to commit heart at what is? <sighs> That's why I don't watch football. <laughs> The last football commentary I had was on radio attached to a wall in my in my neighborhood. The one radio that all of us would gather together. It was Opoli, Opoli, pass to Babali, Babali, pass to Thunderbalogu, Thunderbalogu is a goal. I do not know any other footballer since then. <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> but when your team wins. When they carry the cup, who do they give it to? Did the captain alone play? So if your ministry does not bring him glory, you fail. Because on that field, you are representing him. And they glorify God in me. May your work bring forth his glory. In the mighty name of Jesus. I'm driving this point to his logical conclusion, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, a truth will be established. In the United Nations, every member, you have been to the United Nations a number of times, every member, I knew before you started going, I knew, I looked at you one day, I said, I see you in the center stage of the world, keep on doing what you are doing. And when it happened, I was just rejoicing because I knew before it happened. Question. Was Jesus Christ disappointed that Peter denied him three times? He knew before it happened. He already prayed for him before it happened. So that your faith will not fail. So he wasn't disappointed. He said, before the cock will crow, once you would have denied me three times. And he looked back and said, I told you so. And he faced, you understand me? And he went away and wept so bitterly. And when he rose from the dead, he said, tell my disciples and Peter also. I died with him in my mind. You preach this thing like you are the only holy person in the world. And that you've never committed sin. If we make mark for sin, who shall stand? I'm going to deal with that in the days to come. So that people will know how to operate and have dominion over sin. And not sin having dominion over you. If Abraham made it, I'll make it. Uh I don't want to say anything more. If Peter made it. I know that I will make it. I'm following you, Lord. I know that I will stand. No matter what may come my way. way. My life is in your hands. Somebody around you has fallen into sin and you seize the opportunity to let the whole world know. You're stupid. If anyone be overtaken by a fault, you that are spiritual, restore such one with the spirit of meekness as you yourself be tempted. Listen to me. We can help ourselves better. Were you the one I was telling the story of a man, a young man whose mother told, were you the one? His mother told him what is the most important part of your body. No, I think it was, you were there. What's the most important part of your body? And the young fellow said, my eyes. He said, if that's the most important part of your body, what happens to the blind? You don't have eyes to see. He said, go and think. I will ask you another time. And then years after, I said, son, what's the most important part of your body? He said, because I, now that you're speaking, I'm hearing you. It must be my hearing. He said, what happens to the deaf? We don't hear. 
I'm looking for something that will apply to everyone. For years, the boy would suggest this. Nothing was happening. And when his father died and was lying in state, before the family, the mother now has a son. Son, what's the most important part of your body? I said, Mom, I do not expect you to bring this to this place now. We have been doing this privately. Why are you bringing it here? He said, because I want to show you the most important part of your body. Come. And said, son, come. I said, come. And he came. And he leaned on the shoulder of his son and began to cry for the husband that died. He said, son, your shoulder is for others to lean on and cry. Anybody, the deaf can do that. The blind can do that. If your shoulder is not meant for others either to stand on and to climb and to cry and you are able to suck at them, then you have a body that is useless. Sorry. In the United Nations, Pastor Esther, since you have been there, how many people represent Nigeria when they meet in New York? Who represents Nigeria? The president of other nations could be prime minister of other nations. It could be head of state when we're still under the military. That person, whatever he will say, is what Nigeria is saying. Is there I in us? Is there us in I? Now let's leave football. Let's leave United Nations. Let's come. We have seen God. Who shall I send? Who will go for us? And he said, here am I. Send me. Now let's come back a little in 1 Samuel chapter 17, Goliath showed up. Champion of, from Gath. Let's see what he had to say. Quickly, give me Goliath. 1 Samuel 17, verse number 4. And a champion went out from the camp of the Philistines named Goliath from Gath, whose height was six cubits and his span nine and a half inches tall. He had a bronze helmet on his head. He was armed with a coat of mail. The weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of bronze. Come on now. And he had bronze armor on his legs and a bronze javelin between his shoulders. Hey, now the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam. And his iron spearhead weighed 600 shekels. And his shield bearer went before him. I hope my armor bearers are this strong. Then he stood and cried out to the armies of Israel and said to them, why have you come out to line up for battle? Am I not a Philistine? And you, the servants of Saul, choose how many people? I can't hear you. Choose a man for yourselves and let him come down to me. If he is able to fight with me and kill me, then we will be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then you shall be our. Is there I in us? Is there us in I? I can take you to Daniel. He said, no, stop the killing. Let me go and pray. And he called Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And they prayed. And God revealed the secret to who? Daniel. How did he conclude his prayers? For God had revealed it to us. One for all and all for one. If you can't get that, follow me to Macedonia. He wanted to go to Bithynia. The Spirit of God forbade him. He wanted to go to Maesha. The Spirit of God forbade him. Then in the night, he saw a vision. He said, come to Macedonia and help us. Who was speaking? One Macedonian. The day you realize the heavy responsibility, that if you fall carelessly, your congregation goes down with you, you'll be wiser. You know that there's I in us and us in I. I'll round up with an example. Just three, four examples. Two or five. So that you can go and rush your food like Gideon. So, I mean, because God is about to reduce at 2,000 to 300. That can take a city. Not at 2,000, that will be crowd. That ain't going nowhere so fearful. Come fight. Are you ready? Yes, sir. When you hear the word, the redeemed Christian church of God, who comes to your mind? I can't hear you. Oh, God, help me. Did I mention Pastor Im uh, Pastor Enoch, did I mention his name? If you hear the redeemed Christian church of God, what picture do you see? 
If you hear Deeper Life Christian Church or ministry, who do you see? If you hear Winner's Chapel, if you hear Christ's Chapel, is Christ's Chapel and Winner's Chapel not Chapel Chapel? If you hear Citadel Global Christian Church, who do you see? So when they said, I'm swimming in debt, did they mention Citadel? Did they mention your name? To whom much is given, much is required. You must represent God well because what you do can bring a reproach to his name and can bring a reproach to the church. You must live in such a way that you know for such a time I was born, for this purpose came I into the world, that Nigeria will be saved, Nigeria will be changed, Nigeria will become great. If nobody believes your message, get married to it because God is going to use one to liberate us. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. We bless your holy name, our Father and our God. We thank you for the truth that you are dishing out of this conference to liberate men, to raise men that will accept responsibility for the future. The greatness of a nation is contingent upon responsibility. Lord, make us responsible people to accept your mandate, to accept your vision, and to run with it so that in the committee of nations, this nation will stand shoulder high above the perversity that is in the world today. I for us, us in I, I for one, all for one. To each according to his need, from each according to his ability, we are able to build a church that Christ will be glorified and that will march into the nations and bring them back to God. We ask for answers coming from your presence in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.